do 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 so first thing we want to do if we're going to use the internet we want to sign into the logbook so this is the Florida Max Core logbook that's the name of the instrument and you just put the purpose for today's experiments in your name the date and then any there's the listing for solvent if you're uh, whatever solvent you're using and then the amount of time. The, the lamps have a finite lifetime, so we do like to try to track the time. Right. We also sort of put you on the obligation to make sure you turn off the instrument at the end. Because if somebody comes in and finds that it's still on, they'll see the last person to sign the log book and they'll ask you if you forgot to turn it off. Which again is not a good thing because the lamps have a limited lifetime. So the power switch is on the right hand side, rocker switch back here. And you'll just Flip it. After a few seconds, you will hear some mechanical noises that will indicate that the instrument is turning on. Um, this, the software that you're going to use to collect data on the instrument is called Fluorescence. Uh, currently, we're using version 3.5. So I'm going to double click on this icon to start up the software. And the main page opens up. Okay, to, to get to the, the place in the software where we want to be to make the measurements, we've got sort of two rows of icons. We're going to have the second row of icons. All the way to the left, there's an M. And if you hover over it, it says Experiment Menu. So I'm going to click on that. This brings us to sort of a, an initialization screen. And, it'll, and you'll also hear some more noise from the instrument, but it's uh, turning things on and getting things ready. It takes just a few minutes, seconds. It takes a relatively short period of time. And then we're going to be collecting spectra. So from this main experiment menu, you can see there's options for other things like kinetics or three-dimensional spectra. We're going to go to the spectra page. And we are going to do um, We're going to do an emission experiment. We're going to excite um, the sample and then we're going to study its emission. So we're going to go to emission experiment type. Next. And then this is where we can set up the conditions for our measurement. Pick the excitation wavelength and set up the emissions wavelength. Again, on this uh, experimental setup, we uh, pick the emission experiment and we have two things we want to set the wavelength of the light that we're going to be shining on the sample to excite it and then since we're in an emission experiment we have the ability to scan through the emission uh, wavelengths to, to uh, characterize them and so wavelength for the excitation is 350 we're told here to use a slit width of two nanometers so I need to change that to two nanometers and then on the emission one we're going to set the start and end wavelengths for the uh, for the emission scheme. And we will be using 360 to 600 nanometers. So for our particular compound, we're going to be exciting with in the ultraviolet, but the emission will be uh, at least partly in the visible region. And again, we're going to set the slit with the two nanometers. So with that, those are the excitation and emission conditions that we want to use for our, to collect our data. So, sample gets contained in a cuvette, much like we would use in an ultraviolet visible absorbance instrument. The difference here that you may be able to see is it has four clear uh, sides, so four optically clear polished sides. Light could go through very efficiently in any direction. The reason we need the four clear sides rather than two clear and two um, foggy that we use in absorbance. In absorbance, we're passing light through the sample. In fluorescence, we're going to put light into the sample, and then we're going to collect the light at a 90 degree angle. Because we want to collect the light from the sample emission, not from the source that's simply passing through it. 
So with that, you would put an appropriate amount of sample, halfway to two-thirds full is fine. Wipe it if necessary, lightly with the cuvette, and then it goes into the holder. This is a single beam instrument, only one cuvette can go in. The lid sort of comes off, goes into the cuvette holder. Because we have the four clear sides, there's really no proper orientation. As long as you put it in, it'll be fine. So, as you can see, um, the four clear sides, it doesn't matter how the cuvette's oriented. And you can also see the two windows. Uh, one for the excitation light coming into the sample, and then one for the emitted light to go into the spectrometer and be analyzed. So you put the cuvette in place, but it is important that we have it light tight, so we do put the, the lid back on, and then we go back to the instrument and ask it to do the scan.